The next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. Yes, sir, baby, on the radar radio, yo, very special guest in the building, the one, the only, Enes is in the building, my guy. Yes, sir. Welcome yeah. to the show. Thank you, thank you. How you been? I'm um, working, working. I see you've been busy as Working, time. working. Yeah, I just dropped the album um, to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the Making a Band album, um, Too Hot for TV. This one is called, um, entitled Enes and Friends, and like you said before, we start rolling, I, I assembled the Avengers on this, on this, on this <laughs> album, so... I got everybody on there from Benny, Benny the Butcher, Method Man. I got my Battle Rap Brethren on there, Tay Rock. Yes. I got my State Property Philly Crew, Oskino, PD Crack, Freeway, Beanie Siegel. Got my New York Vibe, Vado, Corey Guns. Mm -hmm. And I got my new energy, Za Sosa and DJ Crazy. That's fine. I want to I want to break all that down, but I think like the the most interesting part of this is obviously you said it's for the 20th anniversary, right? And obviously it's very different than you know right. what what came back then. Mm -hmm. Why for the 20 year anniversary of 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 making the band and the project or whatnot, um, did you want to do this? Like, what was the idea when you first thought about it? You saw the 20th anniversary was rolling around. What was the idea to do something? Everything very is different? a pitch, it, and the way the pandemic slowed everything down. I, ha I have been recording this album prior to the pandemic and all of the restrictions that we had. And um, it just was hard to move around and um, network with these artists to to to, to really um, complete, you know, the um, job at task and was to get some dope records and, mm. you know, get the files and be able to record them and um, mix them properly. And that was a lengthy process. So the 20 years, it just came coincidentally by the time the album was finished, it was coming up on the 20 year anniversary of the Too Hot for TV. And so I, lately I've been doing everything with a strategy. So, I mean, whatever you do, it has to be a pitch to it. So, you know, just coincidentally and how it all fell in, into place like that, <clears throat> I just celebrated the 20th anniversary when we dropped Too Hot for TV with right. this collective. It's fire, man. Yeah, man. More so, like a yeah. celebration and Yeah, so energy. like, um, you know, just, just being older and being in the game, being more wiser. Um, uh, like you said, as according to, you know, when we first was – introduced to the world 20 years ago on, you know, the reality TV platform, the music platform, the way people uh, absorb and purchase music and listen to music is way different now. It's yeah. sped up almost like 20 times. So you have to keep up with that demand. Yeah. And so by um, this resurgence I had is just re-entering in the digital age and being reintroduced into the digital age, letting everybody know from the younger generation all the way up to my generation and past my generation that I'm, I stay in force in hip hop. Mm. I love that, and I love how you're making that statement. Like, I stay a force in hip hop. Yeah, you know, like even even within this crazy weird digital age of like yeah. TikTok and Twitter you got and drill stuff. music, you got TikTok, you got um just just violent and infused music. You still got your hippie music. Mm. You got your you know you got your weed vendors now, so that's that's legal in most yeah. fifty states. So people doing. You know what I mean? Um, turn up music. So it's like, it's different giants of music. It's, you got Benny and them holding down the East Coast with the, you know what I'm saying? With Griselda. The, yeah, yeah, the Griselda, the, the metaphors and, the, you know what I mean? The storytelling with that. You got J. Cole, you got Kendrick, you got Lil Uzi, you got the Migos, you got Cardi B, you got Asian Dial, Glow Real. So it's, it's a vast, 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 vast um, spectrum of artists and um, yeah. walks of life. And the way it is now, you don't have to sit through a person's whole album. You could just pick the songs that you like, and you can OD on them songs, and you can wait till they drop the next album. You could pick them songs. But before in my era, you had to listen to the whole album. Like I had to clean the house, listen to to Nas, Illmatic. But it was so good that you didn't skip, yeah. or the Wu Tang Thirty Six Chambers. Mm -hmm. But now. The, the music is so microwavable and everything has a short lifespan where you can, like an album or, or a body of work used to last you six months. You're lucky if you get 30 days out of it before 19 other artists are dropping some good right. content. Somebody and I had a conversation that like, um, he had the exact number. I wish I remember the exact number, but 
they told me that it's like anywhere from 40 to 60,000 songs drop every Friday on Spotify, for example. Wow. Right? It's like, and you're competing. Oh, it, it was, we had a writer here, uh, Teron Thomas, right? He, he wrote for like Doja Cat and, and, and uh, Lotto and Beyonce and a few other people. Okay. But he made this great point where it's like 40 to 60,000 songs drop on Spotify every Friday. That's just Spotify, right? Yeah. And it was talking about like how like if you are able to even crack top 100 out of those 60,000 songs that drop. Wow. You made, you know. You made some progress. I take, I take my hat off to you. Yeah, you're, you're like, you're basically a needle in a haystack. That's why we have all these free apps, social media, mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all these apps are there for you to um, showcase your talent yep. and you treat it like your own TV show. You have your own revolt. You have your own on the radar in your hand every day walking around with it. Mm. So that's kind of like the wisdom that I passed down to the artists that's starting to come in and started getting their feet wet in this in, in this in this thing we call show business. Yeah. Also, like I think a great point that um, we were talking about is like also like the music that you make, right? You got to make sure that it's timeless. You know what I'm saying? Right. right? But also at the same time, there's so many different types of you know, timeless music in this day and age, right? Like, there's some little Uzi records that are going to be known forever because, right. of, you know, I, I came up in the Uzi when right. Uzi was the impact, up, so. the impact, the impact that you yeah. it will always follow you all the way throughout your life into the end of time because you always be able to pinpoint those records with a time in your life, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent. Oh, I got that good job I wanted to get when Uzi music came out or... I broke up with my girlfriend when he dropped that record or, yeah. you know, you can you, you can always match and you know I mean, uh, um, definitive time in your life to the music at the time. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So that's the power music has. And just um, me being older, like I said, um, I know what I'm supposed to get and I know how I'm supposed to go. So on this second hoorah, I'm making sure all my all my business is done. It's just not being an artist and we have to be a brand. We have to be a boss. You have no luxury to just to be the artist anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to have merchandise. You have to have seven sources of income. You have to... Be, be on, be on interviewing platforms, podcasts, freestyling. Uh, I battle rap, so that's just another right. um, form or outlet for the younger fans to see me. Which is a great outlet, by yeah. the way. I think people need to, you know, I've talked to, I've had, I have a few battle rap friends. I, okay. I haven't divulged too deep into the uh, into the genre, but the people who I do know in it, um, it's a great way to get you to to get your name out there. You know, I, like they got you traveling all across the yeah, country, hell yeah. around it's, the it's world. A career. Um, one, so, of, what, one of my fellow, um, rest in peace, Pat Stay, before we uh, yeah, um, go further with that. It's my fellow battle rap brother. But one of my other fellow battle rap brothers, A Ward, he has a regular job, and he said he overcleared over 100,000 last year. Wow. And that's just from battle rap. So, you know what I'm saying? Look at look look how it has grown since, you know, me and Jay Mills planted the seed on making a band. Then it was um, Jay Mills and Murder Mook. And then it was yeah. Murder Mook and Loaded Lux and then so forth and so forth. So I was there with that 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 family tree that, you know, br 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 breathed new life back into battle rap is what we know it today. Right. And then now there's also like a battle rap. If I'm not mistaken, there's like an app or a platform kind of like Netflix that you could subscribe to. Yeah, you got the URL app. Um, you got Caffeine. Yep. Caffeine yep. Um, provides free, um, like it's a free app and you go in there and you can see the big battles, the big events from URL. URL is like the number one battle rap league right now. You still got uh, um, 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 King of the Dot in there. Yep. Now you got Grind Time Resurgence with Disaster. So, I mean, it's even crossing over to, to different continents. Russia, they be having big battle um, events. Oh, really? China, they be having big battle events. You can't understand, you know, the language, <laughs> right. but you can see from the, the expression and, I mean, from the involvement of the crowd that it's 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 it's, it's transcended over touching the people. And I think that that's fire because it takes you all around the world. Because in now, 08, bro. it was like a thing of taboo. It was like everybody, and that's why you battle rapping still. We not doing that no more. Everybody was rapping, trying to get a deal, trying to make records, trying to be, you know, big celebrities, big artists. And battle rap wasn't, you know, it was like the, it was like almost backtracking or going back, backwards. It wasn't um, looked upon as progress. But now these younger guys are just focusing on battle rap careers. Sue Surf, he turned his battle rap career into a full-fledged artist where he gets charged. He gets charged for appearances. He gets charged for features, yeah. walkthroughs, and different, I mean, different venues, things of that nature. You're out. New York, tough, free. So it's, 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 it's big now to where people 
they don't want to be a recording artist. People want to be battle rap artists. You know what I'm saying? Because that's lit in its own nature now. Because it's multiple. It's like you said. You're right. like the seven to seven streams of income. Mm -hmm. That's two streams you have right there. Right there. Well, th well, more. It's more than two. But you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, yeah. Like an art being an artist allows for performances. Uh, it opens up doors rapper. for yeah. a lot of other things. Yeah. Because you're a public figure. But yeah, we got the cheesecake popping. I turn lemons into lemonade. I start. I flip that. Got my own cheesecake company. So make sure y'all go. You got a cheesecake company in. now. Yeah, I got a cheesecake company now. That's fine. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, um what it was brought that? to me by my team okay, and you, go, you know, yeah. just 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 from so many years of um running away from it, I just decided to embrace it in 2022. So nice. it's been up and running for a year. We've been running it throughout social media. So uh, from for now, we're just doing pre-orders. So make sure y'all tap in. We on the gram, Ness Cheesecake. That's N-E-S-S-C-H-E-E-S-E-C-A-K-E. And with the further trans um sent um trans transgression of that, I've become my own um label head too. So I have the five four Ville imprint. That's my business partner, Chucky. Mm -hmm. Smith CEO. He works um hand in hand with the company, deploy me on different platforms. Yeah. So like it's, it's I built a team over these years. And sometimes it takes ten or fifteen years till you build that team that can coexist with each other so we can all work towards the same goal. Right. Well, I want to talk about the cheesecake. Shit, real quick, cause that's, that's fine. Back in, I know. That's fine. I know everybody loved the cheesecake. That's, that's fine. They it's wanted, a great idea. Yeah, it's like, pff, man. Cause, cause you wouldn't, cause when you, okay, cause like when you look at like an artist, like you don't think that like, oh yeah, he has a cheesecake company. Right, right. But, but okay, so you like super passionate about cheesecake? Like where does um the cheesecake prior come to from? our story? Because we 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 actually highlight it in juniors in Brooklyn. Okay. You go in there, we, when we're on the Wall of Fame, they nice. document the walk and the whole story. It's like almost like a two-page layout on a wall right there when you walk in. So it was iconic. And I just wanted to um, capitalize off that. Everybody knows me for walking for cheesecake. Hmm. Well, let's turn lemons and eliminate it. Try to capitalize off of negative thing and turn it into positive. So what can we get off that? The information. Where can, where can we take that? Okay, everybody knows that I walk for cheesecake. Why not? When I pop up, I have merchandise. I have a product now to sell right. that symbolizes that. Now, what's your favorite cheesecake? Um, I mean, <laughs> by me, um, start losing weight. I mean, it's, it's an endless list to that. But the, my favorite is raspberry. Raspberry, raspberry cheese, cheesecake. Yeah, okay. raspberry. Raspberry cheesecake. Where can people buy the cheesecakes? Oh, you, right now, like I said, we're doing pre-orders, but we, right. we're trying to finalize the negotiations with the DoorDash so we can be able to DoorDash it to you. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're doing all pre-orders via social media. So make sure you tap into um, Instagram. It's called at Nest Cheesecake. At Nest Cheesecake. Yeah. Yo, if I have a DoorDash delivering me Nest Cheesecake in New York, <laughs> I'm be like, what the fuck is going on? Shout out to Patty LaBelle, Ani Patty LaBelle. I'm, I'm following the um, footsteps. Of, of of people that came before me, her being so iconic and her, I'm um, delving into the pastry business with her, pumpkin pie, sweet potato pie. I'm just trying to follow in that patriotic sense. We both from Philadelphia. That's why I got the red, white, and blue colors. Next time I come up, you know what I mean? I'm going to make sure I'm going to have some, you know what I'm saying? Some party <laughs> favors for you, some cheesecakes, some, some, some merchandise, some t-shirts, some hats. So, yeah, I'm just, you know what I mean? Right now, we just in the um, promotional phases. So, it's just raising awareness of the cheesecake. But like when you're dealing with food, a lot of people don't know you have to have insurance in case anybody gets sick. So I'm going through that. the legalities of that right now. You have to have insurance when you have a food business. Like yes, well, because I mean, I'm, I'm sure if you had a business business, you had, you have to, like if you had a building, yeah, any business, you had a but building, you have to especially have a, yeah. a food business because it's, it's you're dealing with it's the public. Crazy. Yeah, so you have to have insurance. So if somebody gets sick and they try to sue you, some, some right, sort of right, oh, I didn't know that. Right, yeah. It's a little shit. You don't, you don't even think about that shit when you yeah. go into a problem. Yeah, it's right. Like, See, I'm about to sell some food. Like about to sell some food, and you jump right in. They be like, "Oh, wait, what if somebody?" Then you start thinking about. It. Then you go down that rabbit hole, and then it's just a slew of other things that you gotta just. The best bet is just write them down all on a paper and just keep checking them off. That's so that so that's what that's the phase we at right now. So that's the thing that nobody really thinks about. Right, sees from the outside right. looking at them, like, oh, like, yeah, like, yeah, we might just be selling cheesecakes and we might be trying to sell them on DoorDash and we're taking pre-orders on Instagram, but we actually have to have insurance for this, even though we don't have like a full setup, like a like a right, like a like corporation, a like a yeah, yeah, yep, like a like a Oreo or a Nabisco or a Kiba. We don't have that corporation setup, so everything is from the muscle right now. So I take my battle money, my parents' money, my future money, and I dump right back into my cheesecake business. And it hasn't profited, but right now we're we're just raising the awareness of that the actual product is out there for the, for for people to you know to purchase it. Eat Nest cheesecakes. Nest Philadelphia cheesecake. Nest Philadelphia. I'm patriotic. The red, <laughs> white, and blue. 
Rocky steps and all that. Rocky steps and all yeah. that. Man, I ran up the Rocky steps way too many times in my life. Yeah, did you make it on one on one try? Or did you take a break? When I got a little older. <laughs> I'm sure there's there's yeah. definitely some pictures of me there at like at least eight or nine the, years old. The Rocky Steps the, is iconic. It it's the art museum. Yeah, I ran up there a couple of times, but okay. you know what I mean, I I gotta make my 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 you know my pillage to do it again. <laughs> it's almost like it's like it's like going to the uh, the uh, the Apollo every year. Yeah, you got you got to run up the steps once a year. Make sure you still got it. Yeah, yeah. I love Philly. I do. You know what? You know what? Let me tell you what Philly needs. Right. Needs a st you need to do a storefront, like a late night cheesecake. Yeah, man, I need um late night cheesecake storefront. I tell all my Philly friends this. I'm like, yo, I love Philly, but y'all need some more late night. Yeah, meetings. man, it's like you know, city never sleeps. And nothing can compare to the city never sleeps. But like, right. usually at Philly, everything closes around at two, so we don't have to. You might have to go to some little speakeasy or after hour, but we don't really have establishment that stay open past two o'clock. The Chinese spot that everybody go to. Yeah, but they in t they they in bed with the triads. They got to pay the triads the extra couple dollars to stay open from extra hours to make the bread. That's what you don't know. What the fuck? He said, mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, he said, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, mm-hmm. But there was also like, um, yeah. what was it? There was like a McDonald's that was open, but the orders were getting all fucked up. That didn't work. And then we found this, this yo, I don't know what your name is, but this incredible lady had a food truck open, <laughs> right? Incredible, incredible woman. And she's like, I'm about to close up, but for you guys... She made me some fast chicken tenders. Look, I've never been so happy to find some chicken tenders at three in the morning in my life. I've learned everything that's everything that's good is bad. <laughs> right. Having money and having a bank account, having, you know, a, a documented paper trail for the government to be know where you at and what you're doing at all times, it's bad. Bad. I mean, eating all the good few foods and salt foods and the sugar infused foods, bad. Everything is bad. Right. Everything that tastes good, bad. Everything is makes you feel good, is bad. Mm. Being bright is bad, but then being wrong is bad too. So it's like it's <laughs> fucked up. We just we just living in the system. Yeah, we just living in the system. Yeah, Every, just everything's the wrong. System. Everything's bad. <laughs> yeah, everything is good. It's so good. Come eat this. This they promote this on Instagram. Even your thoughts. You go through your timeline, and some shit will pop up on your timeline. Some food that you was thinking about, or some shit like this. So everything is is is, is like they're trying to take away your uh, your dependency to endorse and to um, be dependent on other people. That thing in your phone, it can make you a million dollars. It can destroy you and it can it can, it can build you up. Right. So you gotta be real careful. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of powerful in, in the media and how you wield that power behind that phone. Right. Well, switching gears, I wanted to say, um, because you know, we were talking a little bit about Za Sosa at the beginning of the interview. Za Sosa. Um, obviously, like I want I want to go through some of the features on the project, but mm -hmm. what I love about you bringing like Za on, right, is cause um I think it's dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You being in the game for how long you've been in the game and just even like extending that that hand to right. someone like Zai. And you know what right. I'm saying? Like, y'all obviously make very different music. Definitely. But sometimes it's just, it's not even about just like, we make very different music so we can't get along. No, let's, let's just, well, I just wanted to from Philly. dispel the myth of that older artists are bitter and they, you know, really have no um, respect, respect for, for the, the younger. Young okay. Yeah, so that was my whole bridge in that gap. Not reaching, not trying to be political, mm -hmm. because I'm also a fan of the dance hall music or the dance genre music. Yeah, the club and, music they make. Yeah, it, like yeah. like like I've lived all those timelines: the Wu Tang timeline, the dance hall timeline, the the Afrocentric timeline. We was wearing all the the, the, the African medallions, mm -hmm. the superhero timeline, and everything was Batman, Superman, Spider Man. The, back to the the skinny jeans, back to the baggy, and everything is baggy back now. Like it's just like I lived through all those timelines, so I incorporate all those in my music. And Zai Sosa is one of the forefathers of the new generation. So you had to incorporate that, that with the whole Philly Goat, D Sturdy, Too Rare, Jabril, mm -hmm. DJ Crazy. Like, they have something over there. And well, well um, even though nobody want to recognize it right now, they're on to a new genre of music. And it's, 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 it's influencing a lot of other music. And um, you have to tap into it because you're going to be left behind because music is ever changing. Always, always, every day, every day change. Every what did my friend say? My friend said every, every three to four months a new sound comes out. Every every month. So I just try to stay loose like Bruce Lee, like water. When they explain it, he was like, you have to stay loose like water. So I try to just stay like open minded <laughs> and be able to fit in them pockets so where you 
you never be categorized. I wouldn't be able to do Griselda type music. I wouldn't be able to do Zai Sosa, that type of wave. I wouldn't yeah. be able to dirt, drill, whatever it is. I wouldn't be able to fit in those pockets and people not, he's reaching or he's trying. I wouldn't be able to fit all those, those, those waves. Right. And Philly's a great place for that right now. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like I yeah. say, obviously Philly and New York have a lot of similarities, but I would say like one thing that is very similar about both is like, there's like a deep, like there's a lot of different types of sounds. Like Philly got drill music, but Philly mm -hmm. also got club music. Got club then music. We got, but then Philly also got people like Uzi. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then like yourself and then like the meat. PNB you know rock. PNB, long live PNB rock. Long live PNB you know rock. rock. Like shit yeah, like so that. So like, yeah, um, man, um, Philly just got of a wide variety of artists. From female artists to uh, um, different artists of different ethnic backgrounds, you got OT the real. Yeah, and how could I forget about OT the he, real? He man. repping Philly OT. by way of Boston, yep. so you got Otis Rada. He tied in with like the DC type of uh, uh, um, I mean um, platform, like go go type of sound. No DC, talking about as Dream Chasers. Oh, Meek Mills, oh, yeah, Chasers. my bad, my bad. Yeah, my bad. so yeah, Chasers, so yeah. you got Rocky that's doing her thing out of Philly. Mm -hmm. She's a female rapper out of Philly. She's doing her thing right now. Lay Banks, that's the Lay other girl. Banks. Yep, you got Two Rare just signed a million dollar deal with Atlantic. Yep. Um, he got he got the Cupid Cupid remix with Lil Durk on it, um. So yeah, man, that, that energy is undeniable and it's here to stay. And everybody needs to tap in with it. Seen the the hottest rap in the world, Drake. Drake got the Philly goats to come be in the video for Sticky again. Yeah, they all Philly artists. Yeah, I, and that and when I saw that, I thought that that shit was so cool because it's just like you know you see it's it's interesting being able to watch the building blocks of like the next generation come right, up. Right, you know right. And it's and I think it's and I think the the thing about the music that's that they're making that is special is because that you know you were talking about how like there's like that also there's like that hyper violent type of music that right around. right Which, but, that's, but at the end of the day drill music is stuff that people live so not knocking what drill music is but like drill music exists so i see them kind of being like the balance of that too like yeah dan like you see how dance music is becoming more popular yeah, it's a certain like, energy everybody can't be everything right some yeah. some people got to be a farmer. Some people got to be a, a blacksmith. Some people got to be a baker. Got to be a butcher. Got to be a soldier. Got to be a policeman. It has to be a firefighter. Mm -hmm. You can't. Sometimes you got to just, you know what I mean, be 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 uh, uh, accepting of who you are. Be comfortable in your own skin. If you know you don't want to live that life and drill and talk about actual bodies and catching robberies on on actual beat and record. All they doing is gang banging on record. That's really what drill music is. You just right. gang banging on record. They just took what they were ever doing in the street, and now it's on record, and it's on Twitter, it's on social media, whatever platform right. they choose to air each other out on. And you, if you don't know that, if you know that you don't want to be in that type of space with that energy, then do you? You don't have to. Music is is just ever changing, and it's just every anybody can be anybody. I mean, you can be homosexual, bisexual, heterosexual. It's it, it just it's just so vast. You could be who you want to be. Where before my era, you had to be a certain type of way. You had to be almost masculine, over 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 masculine, right. macho, a boss. Uh, you know what I mean? And then they demasculized the rappers, and now they start wearing dresses and doing everything, being emo, and you don't know, and you you you, you undecided, and, and and it gives them a, another layer for, for for the fans to be mysteriously into. You know I mean, the whole brand. Yeah, like you don't and know. A for everybody. <laughs> it's like you know what I'm saying. People are just playing a fence. Well, here's the thing: there's a fan base for everybody. You know That's what I'm saying. saying. So I you can be whoever like you want to be, man. Before you couldn't be like that. You had to be tough. You had to be a gangster. You had to shoot niggas. You had to go to jail. You had to beat the case. You couldn't rat. You had to get shot. You had to live that. And then you know what I'm saying? Then you had to come back out. Then you had to wage war on another fucking camp. Then you had to go through them and then live war with them. And now you could just be who you want to be. A skateboarder. You could be a guy that worked. Then you just decided to make a record and it went viral. Now you 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 in the field doing fifteen thousand a night. Doing twenty five thousand for walkthroughs and appearances. That's just how fast. There's no artist development. Anybody can be anybody. A skit comedian, a goddamn fucking barber. Niggas can make beats right there in front of you on Instagram. Anybody can do anything. So, like I, I tell everybody that's coming in this game, man, use the things that's around you to the best of your ability. Because every, every year you're going to get less cuter, you're going to get older, and you're going to get you know, more lazier and more uh, 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 redundant.
and more just settle into your position. You're not going to strive. You're not going to force the issue. Mm, that's a bar right there. <laughs> That's, that's a bar right there. But you're challenging yourself. And I yeah. but like you're not like allow like what you just said, you're not allowing yourself to get like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I'm turning it on his head for people to everybody to say he's older and won't you just do this at this point in your life? I'm no, I'm twice your age and I'm I'm outworking y'all. Y'all 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 twenties, early twenties. Mm. I'm in my forties and I'm outworking you young guys. Mm. So when you look around, there's nothing to say. You can't hate on work. You can't hate on consistency. No. I don't care what you're doing. If you banging the nail inside of a wall, if you see that same person there banging that nail inside of a wall every day, you can be like, yo, bro, you really like in tune with this. <laughs> and I mean, you got to respect uh, that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm outworking everybody to the point where even the haters like, God damn, we got to give it to Ness. Like he's he did the leg that's work. That's going crazy. Yeah, he's did the leg work. What, what can we say? But sit back and watch the Ness show. Right. Great free, great freestyles you've been doing lately. Obviously, you're doing one here today. Yeah, definitely. You've been going viral on that shit. You, you got the great project out. It's like the beginning of a new era for you, too. Like, I feel, I see it all coming around. I think that's probably like the coolest part about it. Yeah, man. And people um, genuinely want me to win because I never got my just do. I never got my shot solo career is showing the people what I can really do. And, um, just from all the love and the reaction and response on social media and when I do my freestyles, like in the last 30 month, 30 days, uh, June 1st, I had 20,600 20, followers on Instagram. I'm currently at 121,000 followers. Wow, that's incredible. On a backup page. I had a verified page. When I first started my um, mixtape series, Let Me Borrow This Beat, mm -hmm. on Instagram where I freestyled over industry tracks, it just you know, snowballed. And it gained to people was looking forward to that. So I actually turned that into a mixtape series, Let Me Borrow This Beat, Volume 1, hosted by DJ Alamo, the Coalition DJs. With that, I just start going deeper and diving down a rabbit hole, start making more music, doubling my efforts on the freestyles, then all my celebrity friends start tapping in and recommunicating with me, and then one thing to led to another. And now I'm backing it full-fledged. And I just want to show everybody it's no age limit. It's no, it's, it's, it's how young you feel. And if you have the tenacity and have the determination to get in there and make some good music, make some good content. There you go. Simple as that. Simple as that. So what's next for you, man? Uh, we got high profile battles coming up. Um, Fire. I signed with Rare Breed um, just this past uh, uh, summer, so you, I mean, look forward to me having some big high profile battles on a lot of the bigger events over there. Um, I'm still, you know, what I mean, um, in the process of you know ironing out the legalities with the next cheesecake thing. We were trying to take that forward in 2023 and expanding that, and um, just dropping these bars, let everybody know bars is back and they never going away. That combined with two more projects, I got the Let Me Borrow This Two, um, vi um, Let Me Borrow This Two, uh, Volume, Let Me Borrow This Beat, Volume Two, hosted by DJ Self and um, DJ Cosmic Kev. DJ Self and Cosmic Kev. And Cosmic shout out Kev. Self, home team right there. That's so dope. yeah, shout out to Cosmic Kev, man. Shout out um, Cosmic Kev too, went up to the Come Up show. We had an iconic freestyle. That kind of like, man, that was the reset button on everything, man. People seen that and they was like, man, where Ness been? Get them up. This platform, we want we want that same energy of this journal, and that's what I've been giving up. All smoke, all wreck, all gas. Every platform. What are we doing today? What be we doing today? Dude? Um, what we want through the day? I don't know. Surprise me. Surprise you? Yeah. Rob, Calvin, start thinking. Thanks. <laughs> well, look, man, I appreciate you being here. Um, for real, congratulations on everything, man. Appreciate it's, it. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, having you on the show. It's been a pleasure again to. Uh, no doubt to listen to this incredible project, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for embracing the young generation and also letting them know that the bars are still here and they going nowhere. The bars is back. Make sure y'all <laughs> follow me on all my social media platforms, Enes underscore 215 on Instagram, 215 Enes on Twitter, Enes Mathis on Facebook, and the email is Ness215 at gmail.com. Also tap into the um, cheesecake page, Ness Cheesecake, N-E-S-S-C-H-E-E-S-E-C-A-K-E. -S -S -E -E and all y'all inspiring artists, songwriters, dancers, choreographers, videographers, 54 Ville ENT. That's the label. Make sure y'all tap in, submit all y'all music, all y'all audition uh, tapes, all that. At 54 Ville ENT. Long live PNB Rock. Long live, live Salaman. Long live Pat Stay. You already know. Long live.
Make sure you go follow him. Make sure you go run up the project out now. Go show him some love. Go show him some support. Run on that freestyle up. The radar. Love is free. Support is free. Till next time. You know, it's on the radar. Philly in the building. Bars is here. Bow. My guy. Dope.